Hey everyone, so my first blog post post uh, InspireX 2017, so for those who turned up to it, thanks so much, it was great to catch up with everybody. So one of the things that I actually uh, spoke about with a few people was the idea of you know, maintenance around the index workflow, and one of the things that people wanted to see is they want greater visibility into the size of their Nintex workflow history lists, because for those of you who, uh, who have come across this already, SharePoint has its own history list, and as you start writing more and more data as your workflow uh, runs and writes more information to that history list, over time that information disappears because there's an auto cleanup job that kind of gets rid of that sort of stuff. So the question was, how do I, uh, you know, what do I do with that? How do I handle it? How do I not lose that data? Well, Nintex Workflow has its own history list. So here's a workflow that I have in a site. And right here in the workflow settings, there's this concept of a history list. And you can see Nintex Workflow history is the name of that list. Now, uh, there's actually ways you can create other lists as well. So you can actually map, that's why it's a drop down, that you can map your history list to something else. So you can kind of spread the load so that list doesn't grow to a crazy size. But one of the things that people want to see is the actual size of that list. Now, I, you know, me being the guy who loves to kind of build workflows, I thought I would build something that would you know, get that information and maybe build up some sort of report for me. So what I did was I actually built a site workflow. See there, right? Site workflow, this is a 2013 environment. And I'm doing a couple of things in here. So first of all, we have a core web server section. So let's pop in here really quickly. And what we're doing is we're just going to my uh, my root site, right? Which is, that's just my server. And I'm calling a web service called webs.asmx. In there, I have a get web collection web method. So this is an out of the box SharePoint uh, web service. And I'm getting the data back, which is going to be a whole bunch of XML, right? So if I actually was to run this now, you know, there's the SOAP packet. I could actually click on execute and you'd see a whole bunch of, uh, of stuff coming in here. Okay. Now I'm storing that in a text variable. Get out of there. Oops. Let's go back in here just for one sec. Okay. One thing is I'm going to sh you know, share this workflow at the bottom of this blog post, but you'll have to change that to you know, your own you know, your own site and also maybe put an HTTPS there. I also use a credential constant here called farm admin. You, know, you would have to create your own constant and use that or type in credentials, you know, whatever you want to do. Definitely recommend using constants though. All right, cool. Now, so we've done that. We, don't, we then have a query XML action. And what I'm doing in here is actually getting all the data out. So this is all old, that's actually uh, I'll replace that with the actual text response because that's going to hold all my XML. And then you'll see I have a whole you know, huge XPath expression to get the titles of the sites and the URLs, and I'm storing them in collection variables. So collection site your titles and collection site URLs. Okay, let's close that. So now that we've got, after these two actions, we now have two collections. We have a collection of titles and collection of URLs. So then what we're doing is we're iterating through, and you can see I haven't labeled these, but I probably should. Uh, I'll do that before I actually share this workflow out. And I'm iterating through all the titles. And in here, I'm getting the corresponding URL, right? So now I have a site title and a site URL. And then I have this action right here. So I'm getting that URL putting in an underscore VTI bin slash list data dot SVC. So I'm making a REST call and I'm calling that particular list in text workflow history. And you'll see at the, at the end, I actually put a forward slash dollar sign count because that's going to actually give me the number of items in that list. So pretty cool, right? I have to do a whole bunch of querying and all this stuff. This should actually give me that data and I'm doing a get. So one of the things I want you guys to, uh, to, do is when you play around with this, I have a very small environment to play around with here uh, on my VM, right? And the the biggest history list I have is around about 6,000 items. So these responses are coming back pretty quickly. Right? So if you guys have lists that are really huge, that have, you know, hundreds of thousands of items in there or something like that, you know, please let me know how long it takes to make this call because I really don't have a way of, of testing this particular call out. Okay, so that gives me the number of items. 
uh, then what I'm doing is saying, just checking to see if an error occurred or not, because sometimes I have a site that does not have any text workflow history list on there. So of course that web request will fail. So rather than just saying, you know, do a whole bunch of workflow logic to check if it actually exists, which would probably be the better way to do it. Uh, I'm just saying capture the error. And if it's, uh, if an error occurred, I'm actually just setting that response to there are zero items in that list, right? Boom, well, pretty easy. Okay. And finally, what I'm doing is I actually have another collection variable called collection site history list size, and I'm adding that value to that. So at the end of this for each, I will have three collection variables. One that has all the site names or site titles, one that has all the site URLs, and one that has all the sizes of the history list on those. Okay. So once I have all that, ignore these actions, this is just me doing a little bit of cleanup. I now have this document generation action. So let's pop into here. And what I've done is I've gone into here and I said, I want to create a table. And notice I've called it an index workflow history list size. It's going to have three columns, collection site titles, collection site URLs, collection site history list size. Okay. And then I selected a document that I have, which I built out very, very simply, gave it a name. This is what I'm going to call it, an index workflow history list size report dash current date and i did that because i want every day for this to potentially run or maybe once a week once a month and i can see over time you know the the growth of those uh, of those lists and then i have uh, the result is going to get stored in documents and just making sure i overwrite the existing item okay so let's go here and i'm going to go over here and refresh this so i have no workflows running at the moment and what I'm going to do is actually just click on this in text workflow history. So I'm going to manually start this. Now I would probably schedule this to run because I'm really interested in getting you know, periodic updates as to what's going on here. So while this is running, this document generation action will actually take a document template that I created in Word and then populate it with data. So if I, while it's working, I'm going to click on this open and tag and this will open up Microsoft Word. It will open up that template. And on the right, you'll see uh, this Nintex document tagger. All right, here we go. So you can see uh, it's not a fancy report here. I've just given it a heading, Nintex workflow history list size report, date. And then what I've done here, where you see this uh, less than, less than, common underscore start date, is I've actually gone over here, clicked on common, and let's see if it, if I have it in here, start date right there. And what I've done is actually clicked on the ellipsis and clicked on insert. So if I do that, if you look over here on the actual document, when I click on insert, you can see how it inserted that token in there. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of that for now. I've also gone up here under insert and created a table, right? So I actually inserted a table and just said, I want, you know, three. Usually what I would do is actually create two rows with three columns, because three columns is what I'm going to have in here. The first row being the title, right? So you can see I just put some title in there, and then the second row is where the data goes into. So what I ended up doing is actually going in here, and let's go to the tagger again. Instead of common, I'm going to go down here into tables and expand that out, and I'm first going to go into this first uh, cell and insert the start tag, and you notice the start tag there. So I insert the start tag, and then after that, I inserted the title. So I did insert that and then insert that. Then I jumped into the second cell and inserted, scroll down here, the URL. And then the third one, I inserted the other collection variable. Now, what that means is that as this runs, it's actually going to create this list with uh, the title and then it's gonna dynamically add all the different rows of data. Uh, of um, you know of the data that's in that cl those collection variables. All right, let's close this and don't save that because we didn't do anything. All right, so let's go here, go back into development, and what we'll do is we'll go into that documents library, and we should see there we go. We have a report that says about a minute ago, and if I click on this, here's my report. All right, you can see the date. Today is the 17th of February. We've got the title. This is a PDF. 
right? So you can't really edit this. And if I scroll down, you will see all the site URLs, the names of the sites, and all number of items in those history lists. So if I scroll down here, you see, here's my busiest one in my site called Play. So I have yeah, up around about 6,000 items in there. But this is a nice way for you to get kind of like a regular report on how you have, uh, how those lists are growing. Now this is a nice kind of overall report. One thing that I would really like to do is actually have my workflow do this work, capture this information about all these sites and store it somewhere else, whether it's in a SharePoint list or a database, something like that. And then have, you know, maybe a monthly report that actually shows that growing over time so you can start seeing trends. You know, so, you know, and the other really interesting thing you could do in here is insert the Hawkeye uh, beacon actions where you can send that sort of information up to Hawkeye. You know, and I think Hawkeye is already collecting some of this information, but you know, it'd be really interesting for you to be able to kind of build out those reports in a nice BI dashboards and again, really kind of help with seeing trends as to lists growing and then maybe sending that information to the appropriate site admin or farm admin to say, hey, there needs to be some maintenance done or we're seeing this type of growth. Therefore, we're going to predict that, you know, doing six monthly or annual maintenance uh, on Nintex databases or Nintex workflow history lists is not enough. We're going to have to start doing this, you know, uh, every six months or every three months, every quarter, you know, something like that. You know, even to the point of saying, well, okay, look, these history lists are growing quite rapidly. Maybe we need to provide some training to our internal staff who are building workflows and actually get them up to speed with uh, building better workflows and maybe not logging every single thing. You know? So that's something else to think about. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up with one important thing in that if you look at this, this is just going down uh, the particular site. So I haven't actually built this workflow to you know, exactly the way I would like to build it, which is notice how it's not actually giving me any information about, oop, I don't know what happened there. Let's go back. Uh, any information of the the current site that we picked, right? It's only looking at subsites, but it's only looking at the first level subsite. So for example, under development, I actually have another subsite and we're not actually going down that second level. So it'd be nice to kind of build that that sort of stuff into the workflow as well, maybe for a future uh, future project. Okay, so hopefully this helps you guys kind of get uh, some some interesting visibility into your workflow history lists, but also gives you a nice kind of visibility into the you know, how you would take all this information and use this document generation action to kind of build that out for you and build some nice reports uh, for, for management, for your sysadmins, uh, for your SharePoint admins, things like that. All right, awesome. So thanks for your time for looking into this. Feel free to add any comments to the bottom of my uh, of my blog post. You'll probably notice that you do need to be a member of the site to uh, to post on there. Just so you know, I am not doing this because I want you necessarily to be a member and get any information from you. It's really along the lines of uh, trying to prevent spam from being uh, posted on the site, which uh, I was getting for a while there when it was open to uh, to everybody to comment. So apologize for that extra level that you'll need to kind of follow to be able to post on uh, on my site. Thanks for your time, everyone, and I uh, hope you have a great rest of the February. Thanks, guys.